Local Anesthetic Systemic Toxicity, abbreviated as LAST, remains an uncommon but serious complication associated with the use of local anesthetics. Although prevention and early recognition are vital, healthcare providers must be prepared to manage LAST effectively when it occurs. Intravenous lipid emulsion, abbreviated as ILE, has become a central component in the management of severe LAST, especially in cases involving cardiovascular collapse. Etiology Local anesthetic systemic toxicity occurs when a toxic amount of local anesthetic enters the systemic circulation. Several mechanisms contribute to this event. Inadvertent intravascular injection during regional anesthesia procedures is a frequent cause, particularly in highly vascular regions. Administration of a local anesthetic dose exceeding the recommended maximum also increases risk. Rapid systemic absorption can occur from highly vascular injection sites even when doses appear appropriate. Impaired metabolism or excretion due to hepatic or renal dysfunction leads to drug accumulation and toxicity. Patient-specific factors such as extremes of age, underlying cardiac disease, liver dysfunction, and pregnancy also heighten vulnerability. Moreover, the type of local anesthetic plays a role. Agents with high lipid solubility and potency, such as bupivacaine, are more likely to cause severe cardiac toxicity compared to less lipid-soluble agents like lidocaine. Pathophysiology Local anesthetics block voltage-gated sodium channels to inhibit pain signal transmission. However, when systemic concentrations rise excessively, these drugs affect excitable tissues beyond neurons, notably the heart and central nervous system. In the cardiovascular system, local anesthetics impair impulse generation and conduction by blocking myocardial sodium channels. This results in a range of dysrhythmias, decreased contractility, hypotension, and potentially cardiac arrest. Bupivacaine demonstrates a higher cardiotoxic potential due to its strong affinity for cardiac sodium channels and slow dissociation kinetics. In the central nervous system, local anesthetics initially block inhibitory neuronal pathways, causing unopposed excitation. This manifests as circumoral numbness, tinnitus, dizziness, visual disturbances, muscle twitching, and seizures. As concentrations further increase, both inhibitory and excitatory pathways become suppressed, leading to coma and respiratory arrest. Clinical Manifestations Clinical presentations of LAST are highly variable and may not follow a sequential progression. Symptoms may involve the central nervous system, the cardiovascular system, or both. Central nervous system symptoms often precede cardiovascular symptoms. Early manifestations include perioral numbness, metallic taste, tinnitus, dizziness, and blurred or double vision. As toxicity progresses, anxiety, confusion, muscle twitching, and tremors develop. Severe toxicity may result in seizures, unconsciousness, and respiratory arrest. Cardiovascular symptoms can present rapidly and may be the initial sign, particularly with potent agents such as bupivacaine. Early cardiovascular signs include palpitations, hypertension, and tachycardia. These may progress to bradycardia, QRS complex widening, PR interval prolongation, ventricle tachycardia, ventricle fibrillation, and asystole. It is important to recognize that rapid intravascular injection may lead to cardiovascular collapse without preceding central nervous system symptoms. Diagnosis Diagnosing LAST requires a high index of suspicion. The diagnosis is clinical and based on the temporal relationship between local anesthetic administration and the onset of symptoms. Healthcare providers must recognize the characteristic central nervous system and cardiovascular signs. Symptoms typically develop within minutes of local anesthetic administration, but may be delayed, especially following continuous infusions or large-volume infiltrations. 
Although measurement of blood local anesthetic levels can support the diagnosis, these tests are not available rapidly enough for acute management. Clinicians must simultaneously consider and exclude other possible causes, such as anaphylaxis, vasovagal reaction, stroke, or primary seizure disorder. Management Effective management of LAST hinges on immediate action. Key steps include stopping the injection of local anesthetic, calling for help, supporting airway in breathing, stabilizing circulation, and administering intravenous lipid emulsion. Injection must be halted at the first sign of toxicity. Emergency assistance should be summoned promptly and preparation for patient transfer to a higher-level care facility must be considered when necessary. Airway management requires provision of 100% oxygen and assisted ventilation if needed. Endotracheal intubation should be performed in cases of significant central nervous system depression or respiratory arrest. Circulatory support includes cautious use of vasopressors. Epinephrine may be administered in small doses of 10 to 100 micrograms. Large doses should be avoided as they may worsen local anesthetic-induced cardiac toxicity. Vasopressin may be considered as an alternative. Bradycardia should be treated with atropine. Seizures should be managed with benzodiazepines such as midazolam, lorazepam, or diazepam. Propofol should be avoided in patients with cardiovascular instability due to the risk of worsening hypotension. Ventricle arrhythmias should be treated following standard advanced cardiovascular life support protocols. Lidocaine and procainamide must be avoided due to their sodium channel blocking properties. Amiodarone is generally preferred for treating ventricular arrhythmias induced by LAST. Intravenous lipid emulsion therapy forms the cornerstone of treatment for severe LAST. Although the precise mechanism remains under investigation, prevailing theories include the lipid sink effect, in which lipid emulsion binds and sequesters lipid-soluble local anesthetics and provision of fatty acids to improve myocardial energy supply. According to American Society of Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine Guidelines, dosing for patients weighing more than 70 kilograms consists of an initial bolus of 100 milliliters of 20% lipid emulsion administered intravenously over 2 to 3 minutes, followed by an infusion of 200 to 250 milliliters over 15 to 20 minutes. For patients weighing less than 70 kilograms, an initial bolus of 1.5 milliliters per kilogram is given over 2 to 3 minutes, followed by an infusion at a rate of 0.25 milliliters per kilogram per minute. A repeat bolus may be administered once or twice if cardiovascular collapse persists. The infusion should continue for at least 10 minutes after achieving cardiovascular stability. The maximum recommended total dose is approximately 10 milliliters per kilogram over the first 30 minutes. Intravenous lipid emulsion should be readily available in all clinical areas where local anesthetics are administered. Institutions often maintain a last rescue kit to ensure rapid access to lipid emulsion therapy. In cases where standard resuscitation and lipid therapy fail, emergent cardiopulmonary bypass may be considered if resources permit. Prognosis The prognosis of LAST is influenced by the type and dose of the local anesthetic, the route of administration, the timeliness of recognition and intervention, and the overall health of the patient. With early detection and aggressive treatment, especially with intravenous lipid emulsion, outcomes have markedly improved. Nevertheless, severe cardiovascular collapse and cardiac arrest due to LAST continue to pose risks of significant morbidity and mortality. Neurological impairments can occur following prolonged seizures or cerebral hypoperfusion. In conclusion, healthcare providers must be familiar with the etiology, pathophysiology, clinical features, and management principles of local anesthetic systemic toxicity.
Maintaining vigilance, prompt action, and familiarity with intravenous lipid emulsion therapy are key to optimizing patient outcomes in this rare but potentially life-threatening emergency.